Today I'm going to show you how to soak off old gel and also prep your nail plate to go from this to a nice clean plate like this so that you are ready to shape them and then apply a new layer of gel or leave them nice and natural. This manicure has been on for around two weeks. I'm going to take it off a little bit earlier because I've purchased a new colour that I want to try. So this is a good opportunity for me to show you how I soak this off. This is BIAB but you can also do this with generic gel. In order for the acetone to really penetrate the gel underneath that top coat, it means we need to really buff up that surface and get rid of as much of the top coat as we possibly can. To do that, I'm going to use this Biosculpture 100-180 file because it's really rough. That's going to break up that top surface, creating an etch into it, which means that the acetone will be able to penetrate through it. Now this file is only for the top coat of the gel. You really wouldn't want to apply this on your natural nail plate as it will ruin it. Make sure you really get down the side walls, pull the skin back so that you don't ruin your skin because this is quite a rough file. And then once you dust away all the excess powder that's come off of the top coat, you'll see that when I put my other nail next to it, one looks completely matte and the other one is shiny. This is what you're looking for. You want it to be completely matte where you've completely removed away that top coat as best as you can so that the acetone will be able to penetrate through. So once you've done all of your nails, you're ready to soak them. The key is to use pure acetone and then I have these foil removal pads from the gel bottle but you can also use tin foil and a cotton pad. You want to completely saturate the cotton pad. If you don't have enough acetone on there you'll get an uneven amount of softening to that gel on your nail plate. Fold the top half down first and then wrap left and then right and then just pinch the top to make sure it's nice and tight around the entire circumference of your nail. I'll just try my best to show you that once again, it's definitely hard doing this on yourself on camera. So again, fold the top down, pinch left and then right, fold it all the way around and then again, just pinch the top to make sure it's nice and tight. Allow that to soak for a good five minutes and then use your fingers on your other hand just to gently rock backwards and forwards that tin foil to start breaking up the base of your gel. And then continue to allow that to soak until you get to around the eight minute mark. Then you can start to remove some of the gel. The thicker the gel, the more times you're gonna to need to remove the surface and then pop your nail back in to soak for another minute or so. When you're using a tool like this, keep it flat to the nail plate when you are scraping that gel off. Don't dig down onto the nail plate as you'll damage it. Also don't be tempted to really rip off the gel. If it's not ready to come off, just continue to soak it. Otherwise, again, you will damage your nail plate. If your gel is particularly thick, I would recommend popping a little bit of fresh acetone onto the cotton pad inside the tin foil, and then allow that to sit for another minute or two and you'll find that it really does help break down the gel. My nails are relatively thin, I only apply a really thin layer of gel, so it doesn't take me long at all to remove it. This is a great example of it soaking for a little bit longer than eight minutes, for example. So as I start to remove it, I break the back gel off and then you'll see I lift the front just lightly with my nail because I can see it's lifted all the way and it's completely lifted off the nail plate. So it's a great example of allowing that to soak for eight to 10 minutes. So by the time you get to your thumb, you're ready to go back to your little finger just to remove any of the remaining gel and you can see it just comes away nice and easy. I will of course do my best to list and link all the tools and files that I use in the description bar. This technique is really helpful even if you're not a professional nail technician but you want to remove gel at home because A you didn't really like what you had done or B you don't want to go back there just to have it removed. You can still do this technique at home. Just be very very cautious with the tools, make sure you're not digging down into your nail plate, be mindful and just use your common sense. I don't know about you, but I find it really satisfying to watch the gel coming off because it's just kind of like, it's all crispy and it just flakes off and it's just really satisfying to watch. Okay, so once you've removed all of your gel, just use a nail brush to dust away all the excess product from your fingers. You'll then be able to see if you've got any gel left on your nail plate. Remember, we have used acetone, so expect them to look very dehydrated, but this is great because it means we can seal the dead skin that's sitting on that nail plate that needs to be removed. I picked up this tip on a course recently and it's to pop some talcum powder on the nail plate. Use your finger to really work it in down the side walls and around the cuticle area. It's going to soak up any moisture and it's just going to really help with kind of almost pushing that side wall away so that when you start to work over it with a cuticle pusher like this, it just helps with everything. So it's a really nice tip and I found it worked really well. 
So I'm using a cuticle pusher down the side walls and around the cuticle area just to lift any dead skin cells. This is almost creating like a trench or a groove that we will then be able to trace around with our next tool that's really going to clean that nail plate. You can either do one nail at a time or just go around with each tool doing all five nails. So this is the tool I'm going to use here. It has a really sharp edge so you do need to be careful. It's going to almost glide over the nail plate so you want to keep it flat to the surface. Don't dig in and don't use a lot of force because it is sharp. It really will just pull up any dead skin cells sitting there. These tend to shed from the nail and grow outwards. Because we do have natural oils and stuff on our nails, without the gel, you can't really see this laying on there, but imagine if you apply the gel directly to it and then it sheds, as it lifts from the nail plate, your gel's coming off with it and that's what creates that lifting at the back. So even though you can't see it without dehydrating the nail, it is there and it needs to come off if you want your gels to have longevity for two to three weeks. You can see that I'm using the edge of it, not digging into the nail plate, but keeping it flat to the surface and just working it around the cuticle area. And it's removed most of what we can see. But now we're gonna go in with this tool by Starlex. I had one of these when I first trained with CND, probably in 2012. And I forgot how much I liked it until I did this course recently and it was recommended. And I thought, I remember loving this tool. Again, super important to keep it flat to the nail plate. The edge of it is like a blade. So as you gently pour across, again, you don't need a lot of pressure. It probably looks more so up close, but it's very, very light handed. You just put it towards your cuticle and pull backwards and it will scrape any remaining flakes of dead skin. This is particularly great down the side walls, pull the skin back and then use this along the side wall. A lot of people tend to get lifting at the side wall and it's because there's a little bit of remaining dead skin that you can't see. This is really getting rid of all that. It's also super satisfying to do. You can get this tool on Amazon, so I'll link it below. The other side is a flat side that you can use to lift the gel or scrape the gel off the nail plate when you're soaking it. So it's a really good handy tool to have. I even use this on my husband when I give him a little manicure. You don't need to be a professional to give yourself a manicure. Use some nippers just to take away any snags of skin, but don't touch your cuticle. It's a thick layer of live tissue. Please don't cut that away. Now I'm going in with this orange and blue buffer using the orange side. This is also a 100-180, but this has been designed to be used on the natural nail plate. When you feel this one versus the black one that we used for the top coat, you'll feel that there is a huge difference to them. This one's much softer. So we're using this across the natural nail plate to remove any remaining gel particles, anything that's making the surface look or feel rough. Again, make sure you take this down those side walls. I know we've used the tools to remove some of that skin, but we wanna make it super smooth so that it's fresh and ready for a fresh coat of gel if you are applying them. Also, it looks nice and neat if you're just going for a natural finish. It's quite bendy, this file, so you can find you can really sort of press on the nail plate and go around in a circular motion to get around the cuticle, but also the side walls. It's much more soft and bendy. The last step is to use this pink buffer, which is the 180-220. It's super soft. It's really just to kind of refine the nail plate. It's the last kind of step that makes it super smooth, almost gives it a little bit of a shine. Once you've used this on your nails, you'll love the finish. It really does make them feel super smooth, which is a big change from when you first removed that gel and they feel super rough. I then just like to go in with my nail brush to remove any dust. This is great if you're gonna be going in with a gel overlay, but if not, you can just pop some cuticle oil on. I'm not gonna because I am gonna be reshaping them after this and then reapplying gel. So this is before I've shaped them. This is just the gel removal and preparation for my next gel overlay. So I hope that's been helpful. I love this technique. This is great if you're somebody that doesn't want to use an e-file and also if you find that you get a lot of lifting around the sidewalls or the cuticles, this will definitely up your manicure longevity. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. I hope you found this useful. Please share this with your friends and family, anybody that's either into nails that wants to up their manicure game at home. A lot of these products can be purchased on Amazon. And again, I will list a link as much as I can in the description bar. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram at Show Me Makeup and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.